What is up guys, it's review time. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Spyderco Perrin PPT. Uh, while I recite the specs to y'all, I'll be doing some size comparisons with uh, a couple knives here. Um, so overall this knife is 7 and 3 8 inches long. Um, close is 4 and a quarter inch. Um, the hole is 9 and 16 7 inch diameter. Blade is 3 and 5 30 seconds of an inch. Cutting edge is 2 and 11 16 of an inch. The thickness is an eighth of an inch for the blade. Um, blade steel is CPM is 30 V. And the weight is 5.3 ounces. So here it is next to uh, the Spartan and the uh, Spyderco Tenacious. I like using these two for size comparisons, mostly because a lot of people have them. So I'm making a review of this knife. Uh, just basically because I'm not going to own it anymore, I, I need to sell off to make some money. Um, but I have had enough time with it to get an impression of it and uh, really get an idea of how it works and how, how it really performs. So let's start with the blade. You have that 3 and 5 30 seconds inch of uh, blade of S30V, um, full flat ground from the top. Uh, you can see here you actually lose quite a bit of cutting edge because of this choil, but that's pretty standard on a lot of spider codes and I don't really mind it. Your blade shape is a modified Warncliffe. Um, you can see it's actually pretty flat, the blade. Um, it just comes up a little bit and not really any belly. Um, in my opinion, this is actually okay. Uh, I like the shape of this blade for, for most, most utility tasks. Uh, you can see the tip here is pretty sharp. Um, this actually has been dulled since factory, but um, you can see here there's also a very nice attractive switch. I really think the blade is very good looking. Um, the blade and the handle. Got that standard uh, Spyderco satin finish. Looks very nice. One thing you'll notice about the blade is that it sort of has a negative blade angle. When you hold the knife naturally in your hand, um, you'll find that the blade sort of tilts down. And this really helps when you're doing sort of slicing cuts or doing draw cuts or uh, really anything, it makes it a little more comfortable that you don't have to really torque your wrist to cut with. Um, it, that's especially good for food prep. So that's another plus with this knife. Uh, here on the tank, you can see Spyderco CPM S30V with a spider, and PPT, and uh, Taichung Taiwan. Let's get, see if I can get focus. Okay, so let's talk about the handle now. The blade's all good. I mean, I'm only deciding to sell this knife because I need money and also because uh, there are a few thin quirks with the handle, but the blade is perfectly fine. Um, the handle is black G10, corrugated. Uh, it's sort of like the Yin's Anzo pattern, um, but less, more, more blocky, I guess. Really all they did is cut triangles out of the G10 to make this sort of uh, texture, but I really like the look of it, and it's pretty comfortable in the hands, so I have no complaints about that. There's kind of two groups you can take with this knife. One is um, with this using this here as a choil and putting your three fingers back here, or you can actually move both your fingers up into this sort of groove and uh, you can actually use the second run of jimping uh, with your thumb, which is pretty cool. I really like how they have two sets of jimping. The problem is they're not very good jimping, so uh, <laughs> whatever good was done by that. It's kind of negated by the fact that it's really smooth, so. The handle itself is actually pretty thick, um, and that manifests itself in the weight as well. This thing weighs 5.3 ounces, which I think is pretty hefty uh, for a knife of this size. Now, would this make me not carry it? Probably not. Um, I, I can bear very uh, you know heavy knives, but uh, there's a point where it gets a little bit heavy, and this is just on that line. It's almost a little bit too heavy for the for, um, knife you're getting. And combined with the thickness, it's a little bit annoying to me. That's one of the reasons why I decided not to keep it, because it just it's kind of thick. Another thing is, though the opening hole is actually pretty big, uh, it is kind of occluded by the G10 here, and it's definitely occluded from the left side. Though I can still open it from the left and open it from the right. What I find is when I'm opening it, I kind of use a two-step process. I push it out and then push it up. Because if I went straight around, I'm rubbing my thumb all the way on this G10 here. And you can see, even though the... G10 doesn't cover the hole here. Uh, as I pass it, my thumb runs into it. So uh, that's that's just one thing about the opening. 
lock on this guy is a sort of a liner lock. It's um, a hybrid lock. It's kind of like a crossbreed. That's how it's described in the letter. Um, as a cross between a frame lock and a liner lock, and I agree with that. It's about the thickness of a liner lock, uh, a frame lock, but uh, it's sort of mounted in the handle like a liner lock. So I do like the lock. I think it's strong. There's no play, so I really can't complain about that. The only thing I worry about is that this being so exposed, would it be easy to, you know, while holding on to the G10 handle skills, actually knock this out of uh, place and unlock the blade? I think that might be an issue. Let's go on to the clip. The clip is another slight hit. Um, I do like the clip design. It's sort of the fold over bayonet style, the SOGS and you know the Buck Vantage. Um, and it allows for very deep carry, which is nothing to complain about. And it also has this pretty cool run of jimping here. Uh, this can be used to help you pull the knife out of your pocket. It's not that effective, but I wouldn't like to have something really sharp on my clip as I'm drawing my knife. However, you can see that if you carry the knife, uh, let me show you. If you carry the knife uh, straight down in the pocket like that with the clip straight down, you'll see that the blade is kind of diagonal. If you move the knife so it's straight in your pocket, you'll see that the clip is diagonal. And you can see uh, with that, it's kind of askew in your pocket and it's kind of a weird position because um, when you stick it in normally, you'll find that the weight will bring it to like that. And then, uh, you know, it'll kind of twist and turn in your pocket because of that uh, incongruity between the angles here, between the vertical angle of the knife and the clip. Construction is good, very solid with the heavy metal backspacer. Um, overall, I recommend this knife to anybody who, who likes the design. I really liked the looks when I uh, first saw it. When I got in hand, I decided a few things about the handle and the ergonomics and the opening weren't quite for me. Um, but if you do appreciate the design and if you uh, like a thick, beefy knife and you like a, a good, substantial handle and uh, you don't mind a little bit of an opening problem along with a clip problem, this is definitely a good decision. Um, it's made in Taichung, uh, which is where a lot of other spiders are made, such as the Sage, um, the Chaparral, the Zulu, um, the, I think the Gale Bradley too. So uh, rest assured you'll be getting a quality knife. Um, price on these guys is about 120 I think that's in the ballpark. I don't think that's excessively expensive or very cheap. Um, I think that's about right. And for spider quality, I mean the money's worth it. Let me just show you real quick what was in the box that came with the knife. Uh, besides the plastic baggie, there's a little letter, which is pretty cool. Um, this is a collaboration design between three designers, Fred Perrin, uh, Philippe Perotti, and Sasha Thiel. Um, also, there's a lanyard that comes with it. There's a, it's black and tan paracord, and you can put this on the knife, but I decided not to. Um, the previous owner took it off, so I decided to leave it off. But um, It's a very cool knife. Uh, if you like the design, get it. Uh, it's definitely a decent buy for the money. All right, I'll see you all later. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Peace.